Getting close to the end, man. Page 150. Daichi Kundo. Success in milling on the retreat takes good judgment of distance and the ability to stop in your retreat quickly and unexpectedly. The common fault is to deliver your blow while actually on the move instead of properly stopping to do it. Develop great rapidity in passing from defense to attack and then back to defense again. Remember do not attempt to hit while backing away. Your weight has to shift forward. Step back, halt, and then hit or learn to shift your body weight momentarily forward while the foot backs up. Whether on the offensive or retreating, one should strive to be a confusing, difficult target. One should not move in a straight forward or in a straight backward direction. When avoiding or maneuvering your opponent by footwork, keep as near to him as you can for retaliatory purposes. Move lightly, feeling the floor as a springboard, ready to snap in with a punch, kick, or a counter punch or kick. To retreat from kicks is to give the adversary room. So it is wise, at times, to crowd and smother his preparation and gain time, consequently, with a stop hit. So, quick question. This is like, I want to say fainting, but like an off rhythm. Kind of like, uh, you get on the defense, attack, then back to defense. Which one are you talking about before the yeah, statement? Yeah, before this one. The one where it says, when avoiding or maneuvering your opponent by footwork, keep as near to him as you can for retaliatory purposes. Move lightly, f feeling the floor as a springboard, ready to snap in with a punch, kick, or a counter punch, or kick. You talking about that one? Right. So he's saying don't stay too far away, like just stay within range so you can counter. Like stay close to him so you can counter. Like you can't, like that's a lot of things that beginners do that's wrong is when somebody's trying to attack you, you move too far back. Okay, you might get away from their attack, but then you can't attack them back. That's the problem. Sidestepping. Sidestepping is actually shifting the weight and changing the feet without disturbing balance in an effort to quickly gain a more evident state advantageous position from which to carry the attack. It is used to avoid straightforward rushes and to move quickly out of range. When an opponent rushes you, it is not so much the rush you sidestep as some particular blow he leads during the rush. Sidestepping is a safe, sure, and valuable defensive tactic. You can use it to frustrate an attack simply by moving every time an opponent gets set to attack or you may use it as a method, method, method of avoiding blows or kicks. It may also be used to create openings for a counter attack. Sidestepping may be performed by shifting the body forward which is called a forward drop. This is, pretty, this is a pretty safe position with the head in close, the hands carried high and ready to strike the opponent's groan or stop on his insteps or carry a one or carry two-fisted hooking attack. The forward drop, also called a drop shift, is used to gain either the outside or inside guard position and is, therefore, a very useful technique in infighting and grappling or grappling. It is also a vehicle for countering. It requires timing, speed, and judgment to properly execute and may be combined with a jab, straight left, straight left, left and right hooks. same step may also be performed readily in the, to the right or left or back, depending on the degree of safety needed or the plan of action. 
properly used, sidestepping is not only one of the prettiest moves, but is also a method of escaping all kinds of attacks and countering an opponent when he least expects it. The art of sidestepping as of ducking and slipping is to move late and quick. You wait until your opponent's kicker blow is almost on you and then take a quick step either to the right or left. In nearly all cases, you move first the foot nearest the direction you intend to go in. In order to do the step in the quickest possible manner, the body should sway over in the direction you are going slightly before the step is made. The rear foot then follows quickly and naturally, and in sidestepping a rush, the fighter turns immediately and counters his man as he flies past him. When sidestepping a lead, the counter is naturally quite easy. Not so after a rush for to counter effectively here. A fighter has to keep very close to his opponent, moving just enough to make him miss. The fighter must then turn extraordinarily quickly to be on him before he has flashed past. Remember, when an opponent rushes you, it is not so much the rush you sidestep as some particular kick or blow he leads during the rush. Indeed, if you step to the side of your opponent without catching sight of some blow, to get outside of, you'll be very liable to run into a hook or a swing. Side stepping right. Carry the right lead foot sharply to the right and forward, distance of about 18 inches. Bring up the left foot an equal distance behind the right. The step serves to swing the body to the left, bringing the right side further forward and closer to the opponent's left rear when in the right stance himself. For that reason, the right side step is not used as frequently as the one to the left. Most of the weaving and side stepping is to the left, keeping you closer to his right and further away from his left rear hand. The situation changes in a right stance versus left stance. Occasionally, a right side step is taken just to vary the direction of the weaving, and less frequently in slipping a right lead, getting inside of it to counter with the left. It is used in starting a left to the body. Side stepping left. From the fundamental right stance position, bring the left foot sharply to the left and forward a distance of about 18 inches. This should carry you to the outside of the opponent's right jab. You will find just as you take the step to the left, the left side of your body swings forward and the right side back so that you rotate towards the opponent's right flank. As you complete this half circle movement, you will find that your right foot is again in its normal position ahead of the left foot. If you have taken a side step to to the left to avoid the opponent's right lead, you should sway your body and duck your head without losing balance in the direction of the step, that is to the left. His right will swish by over your head in the direction of your right shoulder. Now as you wheel to the right toward the opponent, you have his whole right flank exposed and can quickly land a left to the body or jaw with telling effect. Remember this simple thought, move first the foot closest to the direction you wish to go in. In other words, if you wish to sidestep to the left, move the left foot first and vice versa. Also in all hand techniques, the, the hand moves first before the foot. When the foot techniques are used, of course, move the foot first before the hand. Remember also to always re retain the fundamental stance. No matter what you do with the moving pedestal, the turret carrying the artillery must remain well poised, a constant threat to your fo foe. Aim always to move fluidly, but retain the relative position of the two feet. Examine footwork for body feeling control. 
as a whole and neutralness. Attack and defense capability at all times. Ease and comfort in every direction. Application of efficient leverage during all phases of movement. Superb balancing at all times. Elusiveness and well protected corresponding structure and correct distancing. Experiment on the following mechanics and feeling of footwork. Footwork to be evasive and soft if the opponent is rushing. Footwork to avoid contact point as if the opponent is armed with a knife. The ultimate aim is, is still to obtain the brim of the fire line on the opponent's final real thrust. Remember, mobility and rapidity of footwork and speed of execution are primary qualities. Practice footwork and more footwork. Footwork can be gained also by skipping rope, an exercise to learn how to handle one's body weight lightly. Sparring, the learning of distance and timing in footwork, and shadow kickboxing, homework for sparring. Running will also strengthen the legs to supply boundless energy for efficient operation. Increase control of the legs through medium squatting posture exercises and abnotation movement, low walking. Low walking? Is that like lunges? Yeah. Like cat stands, lunges. Incorpor incorporate alternative leg splits for flexibility. No matter how simple the strokes being practiced in the lesson are, or whether they are an offensive or defensive nature, the practitioner must be made to combine footwork with them. He must be made to advance or retire before, while, and after the stroke he is working on has been executed. In this way, he will acquire a natural sense of distance and develop great mobility. Practice footwork variations along with kicking tools, hand tools, covered hand and or knee positions. During fighting, there's a good deal of parrying, especially with the rear hand, but it is better to use footwork, duck and counter, snap back and return, slip and punch. Slipping is avoiding a blow without actually moving the body out of range. It is used primarily against straight leads and counters. It calls for exact timing, timing and judgment, and to be effective it must be executed so that the blow is escaped only by the smallest fraction. It is possible to slip either a left or right lead. Actually slipping is more often used on a forward hand lead because it is safer. The outside slip that is dropping to a position outside the opponent's left or right lead is safest and leaves the opponent unable to defend against counterattack. Slipping is the most valuable technique, leaving both hands free to counter. It is the real basis of counterfighting as performed by the expert. Slipping inside a left lead. As the opponent leads a straight left, drop your weight back to your rear left leg by quickly turning your right shoulder and body to the left. When you say your left, is that what your like left lead forward, or your left lead your left leg is the rear in that situation? 
Well, here he shows a picture with the person having his left leg forward doing a jab with the left. Okay. And then the person that's slipping the punch actually has the opposite stance. So the other person has a right stance. And he's slipping the punch. Okay. Your left foot remains stationary, but your right shoulder pivots inward. This movement allows his left hand to slip over your right shoulder as you obtain the inside guard position. Slipping outside the left lead. As the opponent leads a straight left, shift your weight forward and right and forward over your right leg, swinging your left shoulder forward. The blow will slip over your left shoulder. A short step forward and the right with your right foot facilitates the movement. Your hand should be carried high in a guard position. Slipping inside a right lead. As the opponent leads a right punch, shift your weight over your lead right leg, thus moving your body slightly to the right and forward. Bring your left shoulder quickly forward. In doing so, the punch will slip over your left shoulder. Be sure to rotate your left hip inward and bend your knees slightly. The inside position is the preferred position for attack. Move your head separately only if the slip is too narrow. Slipping outside a right lead. As the opponent leads a right, drop your weight back on your left leg and quickly turn your right shoulder and body to the right. Your right foot remains stationary and your left toe pivots inward. The punch will slip harmlessly by. Drop your right hand slightly, but hold it ready to drive an opponent to the opponent's body. Your left hand should be held high near your right shoulder, ready to counter to his chin. Another method is to shift your weight to your left leg and pivot your right heel outward so that your right shoulder and your body turn to the left. Drop your right hand slightly and keep your left hand high near your right shoulder. When slipping the shoulder roll, we'll shift your head don't tilt it unnaturally. Try to always hit on the slip, particularly when moving forward. You can hit harder when stepping inside a punch than when you block encounter or period encounter. So you say you can hit harder when slipping a punch, or basically countering? So he's saying you can hit harder if you if you slip a punch without even having to block a period at all. Right. Like Mayweather does that stuff a lot.
Why don't you do the tidy form one time real quick?